Hello everyone. Welcome back to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to continue with my video that I started last time where I was covering PostgreSQL and .NET Core integration. Today I'm going to cover another interesting topic on Postgres. Now you might already know but JSON support in relational database is becoming more and more prevalent. SQL Server also started supporting it. PostgreSQL supports it for quite a few releases. But the recent support for JSON is really powerful in Postgres. So I'm going to start off with my previous table that I created. I'm going to first drop the table and then recreate it with a JSON. The JSON format in Postgres is similar to what it is there for Mongo and other document database. It is JSONB or JSON binary. So first I'm going to go ahead and select from the table that I created employee. And then next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop this table. The table is dropped successfully. Next thing I'm going to do is create the new employee table but this time instead of using uh, relational columns I'm just going to have the employee ID and a JSON B for the employee data. So I'm going to say create table employee and inside that all I'm going to do is I'll, I'll have a ID which is int and then I'm going to have data which is JSON B. Just fix this in there. Yeah. Just now I'm going to execute this command to create the table and the table is created. I'm just going to do a select on employee. And I can see there is nothing currently. So next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and update the code to insert an employee first. So I'm going to open the previous code that I had which is this code where I was you know inserting into employee so I'm going to do the same thing so I'm going to say insert into employee ID and instead of everything else I'll just have data and here I'm going to create uh, ID ideally the ID should be a auto generated number but for the time being I'm just going to insert here and here I'm going to provide the JSON which I'll be inserting into the table. Here I'm going to create the JSON. So I'm going to say first name, first name, and I'm going to give John and then I'm going to create the last name Smith. So I'm just going to for the time being just keep two properties John Smith first name and last name 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first name so now I cannot directly say select first name instead what I have to do is I have to say select first name from data right so I'll have to use the syntax to extract the value out of the JSON and for that the syntax that Postgres supports is this syntax and then I'm going to provide the first name so I'm so here I'm saying select the first name attribute from the data JSON from employee and then I'm going to just take this and write it into the output so let me run this and I'm going to insert a breakpoint so that I can see the execution going I'm going to run and the breakpoint is here it's going to step over and now you can see this code is executed properly I'm just going to go and do the select again and I can see my data is inserted so in the data I can see last name and first name I'll go back to my code and do a step over and I can see value has a count of 1 and it is coming as now hmm. wonder why let me just select this oh I understand because the name I have put as NAM not NAME so let me stop this let me fix this here and let me delete the record from employee I could have kept it but it's better to start fresh okay, so let me this time let me just escape the breakpoint directly do a run and we should see John appearing in the console yep we can see John is in the console now so this is a very useful and powerful feature in Postgres because using this feature what we can do is we can especially when we are integrating with external databases or external data sources where the data output is JSON and it's a complex data structure it's very easy to just save it as is and then in the SQL itself we can use, we can use complex query to retrieve the data out of it so my data is still there the next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an index on a particular JSON column because that that's what we want right we want the read should be fast and for read to be fast it's important to create indexes at a particular column level and Postgres definitely supports that so I'm going to try that out so for that I'm going to use the command create index and I'm going to give an index name idx underscore first name this is the name of the index and then I'm going to give the table name and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide which element in the data that I want to create the index on so I'm going to say inside of data I want the index to be on first name and this will create an index on the first name uh, I have to just put it inside code yeah. and now 
I am going to execute this statement to create the index and the index creation is successful and now ideally the same query should be faster where if I do a select star from employee where and the where condition can be done similarly where we can say data first name is equal to John so now this query will use the or utilize the index that we have created on the first name and it returned the whole um, row for us so now I'm going to go back and update my code a little bit I'm going to say here instead of John Smith I'm going to say Sam let me stop the code first now I'm going to update the code and I'm going to change the name as Sam and here I'm going to say Mac and then I'm going to update the code here I'm going to say select first name from employee where first name equal to John so here out of the two name John and Sam it should return just one John to us I'm going to run and we see John here whereas if we do just a select star for employee and we execute we can see both the rows are there so this was my second part of the two part series where I wanted to cover PostgreSQL with .NET Core PostgreSQL using PostgreSQL with .NET Core is pretty powerful given that you know both can run on Linux and Postgres having a fantastic support for JSON it makes it much more attractive for developers if you have any questions or you need any clarification please leave a comment below and I will also be providing the link or the URL to my blog where I have covered the this part of the PostgreSQL where I would provide some of the external links also where you might find some useful information on PostgreSQL thank you so much for watching the video